So, Michael Cockrell, you spent six years trying to get permission to get the access you wanted. What took them so long to decide? Good question. I mean, uh, I, w I went to see the administration committee, which is uh, the committee which decides whether they will recommend it up the chain. Um, and it seemed to be going well. This was, this was in 2008. <laughs> Then came the expenses scandal and everything went into the, the, the deep freeze. Then came the, the, the 2010 election and uh, a whole range, one third of new members came in at, at that stage, including many, uh, all of them called clean skins, like Charlotte Leslie. For Is that what they're called? <laughs> clean skins? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what they call it in intelligence. But they, the point about it was that they didn't feel that they were tainted by the expenses scandal because that, that wasn't to do with them. It looked as if it was going well and then another recrudescence of the expenses scandal came. So it went back into the deep freeze but I kept open lines to uh, various MPs and officials in the House and then about two years ago they decided to, to think about it again and um, they drew up a short list of um, seven different companies of, uh, over the years who'd written asking if they could have an access documentary made. Three of them from the BBC, including me, um, uh, Independent, Channel 4, ITN, um, and uh, they had a sort of X factor, and we had to go and give evidence to the select committee. And um, then and they said it was little old me. What a procedure. So you got there in the end. I got there in the end. And how long did you actually film inside for? We've been filming for a year. It is but, a year. Yes, inside, but, obviously, making it sound like a prison, but oh, I mean the House of Commons, of course. I mean, <coughs> apparently, one MP was close to tears when finally you were granted permission to film inside. I mean, did that surprise you that somebody was so upset about the prospect of cameras being allowed to roam freely? Um, inside the House of Commons? Well, most MPs, I, I think, were in favour of it, um, and, and some very much in favour of it, and would send me emails uh, putting themselves forward. That does not include Charlotte. Ah. Um, I'll tell you about the, the selection really later, if you want the selection process later. But there were there are equally a very small number of MPs who I think uh, regretted that television was ever invented and were still suffering from post-traumatic shock syndrome after the, the election expenses. Um, and they thought that the media, and they said the BBC, um, uh, were, were partly to blame for, for, for it all. And I said, but it was the Daily Telegraph. They said, yes, but the Daily Telegraph wrote about a duck house. You on the BBC filmed a duck house. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> What was your reaction when you saw Michael Cockrell and the cameras coming round? I was really pleased. One of my first instincts when I got elected was to try and show my constituents what I did for half the week in this weird Hogwartian place. And so I liated my local BBC and tried to get the cameras round, you know, a little handheld camera for me so I could show my constituents what it was like. How naive. Um, we, we <laughs> well, if it did. took Michael Cockrell six years, how long was it going to take you? I was a much smaller beast, but we did get an audio diary done, and I was able to share it a bit, so I'm really pleased that cameras have been allowed in and lift the lid. Right. Has it lifted the lid? I mean, do you think, in your view, I mean, what has been revealed in, in, in that sense? I mean, talk about sort of plots and planning and little groups of people. Is it really like that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the House of Commons was, was made for, for, for plotting. And the, the Prime Minister said to me uh, that it is a half a church, half a museum and half a school. Three halves. I was going to um, say, that's one and a half. <laughs> yes, go on. <laughs> Depends where you went to school. But, <laughs> but it's the church, but that, that, that sense in the old palace of Westminster, around, behind every arras, someone is plotting away and in, in corners and in the members only tea room and so on. The, uh, plotting is going on all the time. Right. But I think a lot is revealed about the nature of the house and how it works and what MPs do. Right, plotting. Is that what you spend a lot of your time doing? Plotting someone's downfall or plotting a coup? I'm obviously doing it all wrong because I didn't know all this was going on so thanks Michael I'm probably walking past many daggers aimed at my back um, there are certainly protocols and things that are daunting if you first become an MP the tea room you sit in the wrong place no one tells you they just suck their teeth and look at you funny you have to find out from someone else so it is a very odd place of, of lots of rules and third-hand ideas and um, talking and perhaps many of us new lot would say not quite enough action Let's look at the, um, the sort of planted questions, as, as we would put them. I mean, do you think that the public, actually, both of you will be shocked by the idea that actually your email beforehand to ask a helpful question, and it is a planted question, and it's of, of no interest to anyone outside the constituency affected? Well, 
Um, I, I did put this to, to the Prime Minister and he said you know, it's, we're all part of a team and I, I don't think people should find it appalling that, that MPs want to um, get their, their, their message across. I think what the, the problem is if you have conservative MPs being um, given suggested helpful questions to a Prime Minister, that's not the right way around. For Labour MPs, they... It's their one chance to, to ask questions to the Prime Minister so you can understand why they coordinate it. But, but it's about scrutinising the, the executive, exactly. isn't it? Not an excuse to stand up and say, would the Prime Minister agree with me that uh, employment levels are you know, fabulous in my constituency? That's not scrutinising the executive. And I don't think any of my constituents were surprised. Lots of my constituents said, how does it work? How do you ask all the same questions? They know that it goes on and wanted to see the mechanics by which it goes on. So I don't think anything was revealed in that sense. You know, guess what? Everyone wants to be helpful to their team boss that's not news I think people will be interested to see how it's actually done now you were barred from the tea room is that because you were going to eat all the cakes or what did you think you missed out there barred from the tea room is wrong there's a, the tea room is 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 in this film oh, uh, so yeah, it yeah. is in there so but yes, were you but did John Burko try to bar you from it um, there, there were a number of MPs who thought it wasn't a very good idea uh, for us to film in the tea room, but we filmed it in the tea room and we filmed um, uh, this extraordinary figure uh, called Gladys Dixon, who's the woman who runs the tea room, who, who is a much loved figure and um, sings Amazing Grace as she's um, uh, opening up the tea room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the unlikely figure of Nicholas Soames says, Gladys is a wonderful figure. You know, I, there's never a day that goes past and I, my day is not my better by meeting Gladys and then she uh, gave us the tour of the tea room including what, what Charlotte is saying this is where the Conservatives sit this is where the Labour Party sit this is where the, the Liberals sit and uh, she's, she's a marvellous figure. Do you think it uh, diminishes it will diminish people's respect for Parliament or enhance it? Well um, let's see at the end of four episodes um, but Matthew Paris who was himself an MP wrote in, in the Times yesterday that he thought people would understand how this place worked and what MPs did. That one of the things that, that I found out was how much the life of an MP has changed over, the, say, the last 20 years. One, one MP said 20 years ago he would do his constituency correspondence on a Sunday and it would be eight letters a week. Now they get about 300 emails a day. It's mm. just, it's, the world is different as far as MPs are concerned. Remind us when it's on again. It's on at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock ah, tonight see? on BBC I knew it was two. a trick question. <laughs> Charlotte Leslie, thank you very much. Thank you.